Today I just want to exhort you just a little bit on, there's a phrase that we use and have used down through the years, but sometimes we'll hear it on TV or we'll hear uh, somebody wrote a song, but it's just so you know. Anybody ever said that before? Raise your hand. Just so you know. Because uh, that can have different connotations this morning and uh, what uh, it can mean, and I know that's what I write in the Bible was meaning this morning, is I supply this information without being asked. Now, information has been supplied, and I give it to you as a courtesy. And um, on the street, they got an urban dictionary. I didn't know that until I got my youth class, and they started looking up meanings, and I said, where'd you get that meaning? Oh, that's the Urban Dictionary. You learn a lot from young folks, okay? And in the Urban Dictionary, they had a kind of a disrespectful type of act, uh, meaning. And it's, uh, it said, mind your own business. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you hear some people say this, this is what they really say, just saying. Uh-huh. And, and I'm just saying, so, but Paul was not talking to Timothy in this way. And this morning, he's not talking to us disrespectful, but he wanted to remind Timothy of something. In 2 Timothy 1, 6, 2 Timothy 1, 6, and you can mark it down if you don't have it. Uh, and, and for those, in, if, if you've got your Bible, you can turn to it, but... 2 Timothy 1, 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Then he went on to say, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. That 12th verse in 2 Timothy said, For the, for the which cause I also suffer these things, Nevertheless, I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Timothy, I'm just saying. Amen. Timothy, you understand that the Christian walk is a faith fight. It's the only fight we're called to fight. Timothy, I'm just saying, though. Jesus has already whipped the devil. You know what? God had to tell us that today. Whatever he was telling, what Paul was telling Timothy is what you got to remember today. That Jesus has already whipped the devil and all he asking you to do is fight the good fight of faith because when we look at the book of Revelation, we win. Amen. See, the devil fight, Timothy, I just want you to know it's with Jesus and then not with you. Somebody ought to shout glory the morning because you think, well, I can't fight the devil. Well, he didn't call you to fight the devil. He called you to fight the good fight of faith. Paul had sent Timothy on a most difficult mission, and Timothy was buffeted and misunderstood and hurt to the point he was in tears. Anybody ever been there this morning? To the point he was in tears. Just everything coming against him. You may be going through some stuff today. But you got to know this. Just so you know, Timothy, I was buffeted. <laughs> Amen. Paul knew what Timothy was going through. And you know, Paul could have said this. Been there, done that. <laughs> Amen. Paul knew, praise God, what it was like to be hurt. He knew what it was like to be alone. So he wanted Timothy to stick to the job regardless of the tears and regardless of the hurt. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Just so you know. He said, Timothy, stir up. You know, I remember stir up. Stir up is what I did with my mama beans and greens when she, when she was at work. And then I knew I had to get that dinner done, but the soap opera was on. You don't have to say amen. You were so holy. You didn't look at them, but... <laughs> 
you know, you can burn some beans looking at one life to live. And you can be, burn some greens looking at all my children. When you're with your grandmama and you made jelly, she said, stir that stuff up, girl. This morning you need to stir up what's in you, praise God. Sometimes you might let it sit there too long. Stir up, activate. Just like that stuff we used to put on the hair, activate, praise God. But you got to have something in you to activate. Just so you know, focus on what you've learned in your life from my life. He said, focus on what you learned from your grandmama. And we talked about that part. That's why I know we couldn't go on that one anymore. But I looked at what he told Timothy. He said to what? Be persuaded. Keep that which I have committed unto him against today. Timothy, whatever I told you, I want you to know you need to keep thinking about that. Praise God. Just so you know, Timothy, I know I'm as a physician. How many know Paul had a healing? Praise God. Just so you know, Timothy, I know him as a shepherd. God will supply all your needs. Just so you know this morning, Timothy. Just so you know, I know him as a pilot. If you don't know which way to go, he'll guide you today. Just so you know. Just so you know, I know him, Timothy, as an advocate. What is an advocate? He'll be your lawyer for you. Praise God. He'll plead your case this morning. Just so you know, Timothy, that's who you have with it. Just so you know, Timothy, he's a protector. Paul knew these things. And he wanted Timothy to remember these things. He said, just saying. Just saying. I'm not just believing in him, but I'm believing him. How many know you got to believe him today? You can't believe something you don't believe a person you don't believe in i know we've had some disappointments on some things that we believed in and found out they wasn't true some little men but praise god <laughs> you can believe him who you can believe jesus this morning just so you know timothy you can believe him praise god just so you know timothy you can i had a personal acquaintance with him i met him on the road to damascus how many of you have a personal acquaintance with god if you got a personal acquaintance, you can bank on it. I know him, and I know he'll come through for me this time. Because he come through every time. Yeah. Amen. Just so you know, I'm sure he's able to keep you. Because Timothy was concerned not only about him being kept, but the souls that he had saved being kept. You worry about some things and some people. God said, just so you know, I can keep them. Just so you know, Timothy, though he can keep you because he's kept me. I was learning. I looked at a poem and I talked about faith and hope and love and how they questioned what thoughts uh, they had of the future that they'd been taught in church. And faith said he believed it firmly to be true. And hope expected to find it too. But love answered this, smiling with a conscious glow. Love said, believe, yeah, expect, yeah. He said, I know it to be so. Amen. You got to be at a place where you know it to be so. Just saying, praise God. If you have a good father and a child give him something to hold, that child trusts that father to take care of what he gave him if it was a precious thing. Well, let me tell you something. We have a father greater than any earthly father. If you give God your life, how many giving God your life? If you've given God your life this morning, you can put your life in his hand and say, I know what, God is going to take care of me because I put my life in his hand. Just so you know. Just so you know today. How many of you know he's a way maker? He's a keeper, praise God. When you go out there in this week, just remember, just so you know, God is good, isn't he? Timothy, just so you know. But thank God that Paul wrote that to Timothy, just so I would know today, and just so you would know. Amen? Go ahead and stand, praise God. Pastor Henry will say what's going on with you, but you raise your hand toward God, your keeper. If you hadn't put your life in his hand, just go ahead and say, Lord, I might have stepped over, but my life's in your hand. 
and you can take care of what belongs to you. Praise God.